repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. God said, I am not he, I am the one that has come to prepare the way. Amen. That they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were not going to stay uninformed, ignorant, and people get upset with me for using the term ignorant. Ignorant simply means lack of knowledge, lack of exposure. Paul well, finally got tired of a bunch of religious people and said, let them that are ignorant be ignorant still. They're not going to accept anything. You're not going to open up that box. You're not going to be able to show them the way of God more perfectly. They already know. I don't need any man to teach me. Hold those teaching me. Hallelujah. Oh, God bless your heart. He said, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, but these are they which speak of me. Isn't that right? Yes. Doeth the will of my Father. Romans 2, 13. Romans, the second chapter, and the 13th verse. Romans, the second chapter, and the 13th verse. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Now the problem was that nobody could keep the law of Moses. Hello. That's right. Nobody could keep the law. You said, well, Jesus kept the law. Well, he ate bread off the altar. He uh, harvested grain on the Sabbath, he healed on the Sabbath. He told a woman, taken in adultery, uh, 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 where are your condemners? Boy, you don't ask that today, do you? You'd have everybody in church. Ah! <laughs> man came to me one time and said, uh, the pastor where he went to church said, we got to go in front of the church and confess Sunday morning before everybody in the church. This a few years ago. I said, that pastor is ignorant. Amen. Well, the Bible says you got to confess your sin for the church. That's not what the Bible said. It said, first, the pastor go to them. Second, the pastor take two or three people with them. Then, if they don't listen, throw them out of the church. Hello. Amen. Oh, we don't want, oh, we want comfort food. Uh, amen. God loves me regardless. Uh, no, God offers you his love unconditionally. And God gives you his love unconditionally. <clears throat> but if you are so absolute ignorant uh, that you're not willing to accept responsibility for your own decisions. Yes. I guarantee you that 15-year-old girl, her mama going to show up in court uh, uh, and she's going to bawl and squall. Uh, and uh, the poor uh, uh, mama of the one that was killed, they're going to all show up in court. Uh, and the only one that's going to be held responsible 13-year-old, uh, four, whatever, 15-year-old girl that took the pickup and went out doing wheelies and killed somebody. Hello? Yes. I'm going to stand for God. I, I can't blame my mama, my daddy. Why, why would I destroy myself? I, I have been exposed to enough to know that cocaine and, and heroin and marijuana uh, uh, and tobacco and alcohol will kill you if you misuse it. Hello, you don't have to say man. I mean, I, I've already got my maid boxed up uh, and sadly I'm getting ready to go. Hallelujah. Now, listen to what that the Bible said, why would you destroy yourself? 
How in the world could someone raised in an alcoholic's home, how could they become an alcoholic? How could somebody that had witnessed somebody dying of lung cancer, how can they continue to, uh, to ingest tobacco in their lungs? How could anybody, you know what my doctor said, the heart doctor that I go to, Dr. Nalus, uh, looked at my wife and myself and said that I had added at least three uh, or four years to my life uh, because I shed 110 pounds. Uh, I was was killing myself with a knife and fork. I felt good. I mean, why? I deserve a cookie and a cake. <laughs> Last night, my wife defrosted a German chocolate cake a lady made for me for my birthday. I didn't eat it all on my birthday, so my wife I defrosted some last night because I didn't have any dinner. And she brought me a hot cup of coffee and a slice of German chocolate cake. I got and tea you that will suffice for the calories and full meal. <laughs> and I looked at that. I knew I should need it. Oh, but it made me feel so good. <laughs> well, that preacher's lying to you. Nobody makes me feel so good. He makes me shout. He makes me dance. Uh, well, we're healing the sick and we're casting out devil. We got the greatest crowd in the world. And the Bible said that the fatherless have many more children than those that have got a father. Huh? I won't use the term that uh, he Paul used to describe him because you get upset when I use hell. But he said bastard. I wouldn't use that. <laughs> Paul did. Is that what he said? Amen. Ye are bastards and not sons. Why? Because you won't listen to the Father. Now, whenever we look then at separating fact from fiction, see, see we're, we're, we're coming into this new year with the knowledge of knowing that the world is coming to an end in 2012. Those people have been lying and selling books and making money. And I got news for you. The world is not coming to an end in 2012. No. The world is never coming to an end. Oh, the Bible said the end of this world. It talked about the end of the age. I'm not hung up on the coming to the end of this age. Because I read the book and it said, I am a citizen of the world to come. The age to come. Let's know what the 67 Psalm declare. Remember, if you can't progress in understanding, you're going to be... With John's baptism, you're going to be well, wait, wait a minute, you can't, that preacher can't tell me anything. I'm not trying to, I'm telling you that we need to learn how to read the book. Amen. I said, we need to learn how to read the book. Yes. Father's will. Hallelujah. Now listen to what we're talking about. We've already got the birth taken care of. Well, Christmas over with. And now we got to try to pay off the bills between now and next Christmas. But when Santa Claus comes, he just like the government. He doesn't have a dime. The only money he's got is in your pocket. Hello, amen. I mean, just like the government. Make your great big promises with a ho, 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 and away he goes. And, uh, now we got Christmas over with the birth. Did you know that, that intellectuals all over the world, even the uh, 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 nearly two billion Muslims and the Quran declared that Jesus Christ was born, a great prophet. Hallelujah. The intellectuals don't have any problem with the fact that Jesus Christ, historical figure, I like the way they put that, the historical figure. Even Webster got more insight than that. He says that we now they take and separate the age, the end of the age, the end of the world by, what is it, B.C. and A.D.? That's how much influence that he had on 
the world power. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. You know something? What we need to do is find out what the Father's will is. Jesus came with a mission. He came to do something.